Hello, everybody. This week is Galaxy Week, and galaxies are amazing. 100 years ago, we didn't know about any other galaxy except the Milky Way galaxy. We thought we were the only one in the entire universe. Now we know there are billions of galaxies, each galaxy containing billions of stars, and galaxies come in lots of different shapes and colors and sizes, and they evolve and they change and they rotate and they spin, and they're fascinating things. So let's dive in and see what we're gonna talk about. Um, we are going to start with our own galaxy, the Milky Way. How is it structured? What are the different parts of it and its anatomy? Of course, we're going to have our study guide. Then we're going to go into types of galaxies. How are they classified? How are they organized? Because that's how we make sense of lots of data is by putting it in groups, different sets and groups so that we can organize it. Quasars. Quasars are the birth cries of galaxies. And how do those help us determine time a long ways away in the history of the cosmos? And then galactic evolution from young galaxies through older galaxies. We're going to have a lab, of course, our constellations, then our quiz. So let's take a look at this week's lab. We're going to begin the lab by asking you to identify various parts of our Milky Way galaxy. This sketch is definitely not to scale, but I want you to identify the different parts of our Milky Way galaxy. Then one of the things we're going to talk about during this week is something called Hubble's tuning fork. Hubble's tuning fork was invented by Edwin Hubble, same fellow that the telescope is named for. And he was trying to make sense out of all of the galaxies he was seeing through his telescope. And so what he did was he created a shape that was very much like a simple tuning fork that someone would use to tune a piano. He put various kinds of galaxies on the handle and then on the upper and lower segment of the tuning fork. What I'd like to have you do is go through your notes or search online to find various images of the Hubble tuning fork and put the various kinds of galaxies on here and then label it with some arrows to indicate different side, the direction in which the galaxy arms are moving as they open and get longer or shorter. Um, and then use that to answer some questions down here. Now, galaxy cards. If we were doing this in a face-to-face -face class, I have some, they're just little plastic images um, encased in plastic, but because you're doing this at a distance, I have similar images that I've put in the lab. If you have access to a printer, it might be fun, and I highly recommend that you print this page, cut these out, and I would suggest that you try and play kind of a game of solitaire can you move those around on the table and put them in a Hubble's tuning fork shape? Figure out who should go on that upper tine, the bottom tine, and the handle. Now, I give you a hint of how many spirals, how many lenticulars, how many ellipticals you're supposed to have, and then just simply write the numbers in on this. What numbers are we talking about? There are numbers that go with each one of these images. If you're not sure what goes where, go back and look at those descriptions for how the spiral arms change from left to right and look at how the size of the central disc changes from left to right as you go along that tuning fork. So we do this a lot. We practice knowledge and then we use it to make sure it's cemented into your beautiful brains. Now we're going to practice classifying galaxies based on what they look like. In the lab itself, there is a second document, and that second document is called Galaxy Images. You don't have to print this. Uh, matter of fact, the images work beautifully if you just get them offline. If these images um, are not perfect for you, you may go to some of these links. I get, I've gotten them some from Australia, some from the United States. Um, some from Tufts University, and these are places where you can look at these images a little bit larger, maybe in more detail. And each one of these is a real 
honest to goodness galaxy. Um, M87, M82, NGC4565. And my quest for all of these galaxies, there are a dozen of them, there are 12. My quest is that you take a look at each one of these and then try your hand at identifying what kind of galaxy it is. Now, use this as a multiple choice choices and use the uh, spiral elliptical, barred spiral, peculiar, irregular, or lenticular. So those are your choices. And then hypothesize an abbreviation. So let's say you choose that it is a barred spiral. Is it a barred spiral A or B or C? So you hypothesize um, what do you think its abbreviation is? Then after you've done this, and please do this first, and I promise you, you will not get a worse grade if you guess wrong, okay? You will not get a lower grade for guessing incorrectly. I really want you to practice. Uh, there are, it's like swimming lessons. You do not get points off for not being able to swim well when you start. That's what this is all about. I want you to practice this. Then what I'm gonna ask you to do is go online. And sincerely, Wikipedia does a nice job of this. If you go to Wikipedia and you type in NGC 2997, a galaxy will pop up. Seriously, that weird collection of letters works. Some of the galaxies have names, some do not. If it has a name, type it in, and then type the true or actual abbreviation there. And then, were you right or not? Um, be aware that some websites and some people who are editing uh, Wikipedia use, instead of for spiral arm, they use an SA instead of an S. For barred spiral, some people use an SAB for barred spiral armed instead of SB. So if you see something that's a little bit different, be aware, read this over carefully before you actually compare the actual versus what you hypothesize. I'm going with the science used by the astronomers who write our book, uh, Wikipedia. Anybody can edit Wikipedia. Let's talk about galaxy color. Now, galaxy color is related to the age of the stars that make it up. So use the photos that were in the galaxy images and also use the photos that were in the lab itself back when we were playing uh, solitaire with our cards and making our Hubble's tuning fork. Take a look at these and see if you can use this information to answer these questions about the age of the galaxy. What kind of stars do you expect to be in different places and parts of the galaxy? Gal galactic environments, excuse me, galactic environments. I want you to take a look in that document of galaxy images at two really cool images. This is one of the coma cluster. These are clusters of galaxies. Each one of these dots, yeah, those dots, those are not stars, ladies and gentlemen, those are galaxies, billions of stars each. And this is the coma cluster, this is the Hercules cluster. Now at quick glance, you might say these are different. Yeah, they are. And what I want you to do is I want you to take a look at these and I want you to look at the 30 largest dots in each photo. Trust me, counting the 30 will not take you forever, but I want you to take the 30 largest dots and count how many of those 30 large dots look elliptical, look spiral, or look irregular in each one of those photos and then come up with a percentage. Percentage is part divided by total, and then figure out what you've got. The, these are what you get in poorly formed galaxies. What are the percentages of elliptical, spiral, and irregulars in these very dense galaxies and not so dense galaxies? Let's see what you get. Last two things I want you to look at. One is something called the Hubble Extreme Deep Field Image. This one image contains over 5,000 galaxies. I want you to look at it, spend some time with it, answer a few questions over it. And then the very last part of the lab, here's a little video on YouTube where it is a simulation of galactic evolution. So watch it, watch it, the different parts of it. 
This is the best data and understanding we have at this moment in time, how galaxies evolve. So I hope you have a good time with galaxies this week. Um, wonderful, fascinating things. As always, have a wonderful week and ask me questions anytime you can. Take care. All the best. Bye-bye.